yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, I don't think about myself being old, so I'm just crying that and affecting me. Krista says he makes all things new. The next statement was, what I would like God to do with me this year. Rob says, fulfill the needs of the church body through the giftings that he's placed in me. Yes. Getting a hold of the giftings is important. Getting a hold of your gift, your specific gift. Nobody can do bass like Gail and Rob. When they, have, when they finally trans over somebody else, it'll change because... But it won't change drastically, but it'll change. But they do it so well, okay? And, 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 you have to, and Crystal said, to let others know that they need to uh, call forth in all areas. Action results equals results. Action equals results. If we want something done in our lives, we've got to take the step. We've got to move forward. You sow the seed, but then once you sow the seed, you have to step into that seed. You have to say, this is why I sowed it, and this is what I'm going after. Next, next thing was, what I want God to show me this year, Rob says, how to effectively use the tools at our disposal to grow the church both in faith and size. That should be all of us, just uh, his responsibility or my responsibility or Deb's. It's all of our responsibility. With the tools at our disposal, your tools are different than mine. May not be totally different, but they're different. We're all called to be evangelists. Am I correct, Bob? All called to be evangelists. All called to be prayer warriors, right, Mom? And some of us excel, she's listening, I just wanted to check. Some of us excel in those areas, okay? And that's what we've always taught is you grabbing a hold of what you do, what God's put in your heart, and you excel in it. And then finish off, Crystal, how to be still and listen to him. That's, that's a good one, Crystal. I like that. <laughs> this book, <laughs> this book, I believe, is one of the most important things we can use all year. We've got everything in there. You know what's coming, who's coming, whenever they're coming. There is one adjustment I need to make. I'm thinking while I'm stopping here. Um, in December, no, no, yeah. There's actually probably two adjustments. The, I, if you look at page 16, if you got your book. If you don't have your book, why? I don't know. It, uh, on page 16, mark it down that you want to write it down. The family Christmas service will not be on the 24th. It's going to be on the 17th. Because 24th is Christmas Eve. We will have service that morning, but it'll be brief and to get everybody home because I know it will have to be later than normal too so that uh, people can be with their families. And, and it seems like, well, we shouldn't. Well, no, I also understand the dynamics of Christmas. It gets very complicated once you get married. And so we just need to, to do that. Debbie mentioned in our prayer, so read the visions. Get a hold of visions. We will post them on the board here soon back there so that everybody can see them, but you have them in your book. Debbie, uh, one of the things, one of the people I asked Debbie to put on the prayer list was a, pr a professor of mine from Bible college. I learned, and, and actually I had a seminary for preaching also. He's a, a, a man of God that just, just changed my life. And I like quotes. And I've got to have a couple of them in here in a minute, but I, I just went back. I'm putting a book together called My Back Pages, which is writings, partial writings. Uh, uh, I don't remember the whole title. Huh? Thoughts and uh, quotes. But it's, I'm putting together, I've got 190 some pages in it right now. I'm just my backtracking through my journals. But I think I'm going to stop there and make a book two after that because nobody reads it. But it's going to be, my whole vision of the book is going to be so out of, out of sync. It's going to look like one of the books. Who put this together? It's not going to, it's going to be just weird looking. From the beginning, Pastor Chuck's going to design my cover, he told me. And so it's like, um, I'm going to, but it's in the inside, you guys go, what? How did, did they ever edit this? Because it's just going to be cold, hard, what I've got. You know? Anyway, I like quotes. Here it is. Here's one I'm really the pastor, uh, Dr. Sackett did. He says, I will teach what I know and practice what I understand. Now, I'm going to give you these quotes. You may have to sit on them a while. I had to on that one. I'm not, I'm not going to explain what I came out of it with because then it, it taints yours. I will teach what I know. And that's what we all should do. We should all teach what we know. Why? Because we're practicing it if we know it. You know, I don't know anything about electronics. Uh, I taught myself how to operate a computer. I'm sure I'm short, short my ice phone. I'm sure I'm shorting myself in every of those areas. But I, I operate in what I know. I, I, I teach what I know. If someone asks me a question, if I know it, I'll help them. And I practice what I understand. So if, if I'm understanding it, I'm going to be operating in it. Am I correct? 
So anyway, so and Oral Roberts said this, whatever, whenever I have a need, I plant a seed. And that was a man that planted seeds way back when he was the first one talking about that stuff, way back in the 60s. I can remember my grandma watching him. I want to back up just a moment. Here's one that, that encompasses all of us. We have it on the wall back there. But this is prophesied with me. This was with me at the time in, in, in Tulsa. He says, it's not church as usual, Bob, Pastor Bob, but you, know, but you know that, okay? Lord, I will tell him is what the, what the man said. Pastor Bob, you're training Green Berets. Go back and lay hands on them as I have, am on you and impart to them Green Berets. We did that when, we, when I did that. We've got it on the wall. That's where we operate from and move forward with. Um, uh, here's one. I'm not even going to tell you who said it. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very nasty place. I don't care who you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there. If you let it, no one hits as hard as life. So we, when, we, when we get cast down, when we, we feel like everything's just coming at us. I know in my life, <clears throat> when I came back from Ghana the first time, I was beat down. But I had the prayer. I read all the prayers that you and everybody else had put on Facebook. I printed it all off. I remind myself of it. <clears throat> I would imagine... I'm not putting words in my mouth, but my guess is when they first got hit with the cancer that Rob and Gail got hit pretty hard. And if they'd allowed it to put them down and they didn't, they fought back. And look at where we're at today. You know, it, and we can go through more and more those that, that but that life will, will beat you down and keep you there if you allow it. Let me get one more that I really wanted to get to by doc, one of my professors that I, at uh, LCC was this, Dr. Henderson. He's in heaven now. He was a great man of God. Um, those of you who have been in my class, as you experienced a little bit of him, he used to have what he called pops every Friday in our class. And all it was was a little bitty five-question test. He called them pops. And he would list that. And you had to tear your paper in half, turn it to where the lines are straight up and down. If you didn't do that, you automatically plugged the pop. Because you have to listen to what he's saying. And then you put the name at the top, and then he said, he, he gave us five questions we had to answer them. And it was just, he was just one of those guys who was uni unique. He had been president of a Bible college. He had been a part of LCC before that. He came back when he was retiring to teach again. He said this, it's not your love for the people that will keep you in ministry. And at the time I heard this, I was brand new in ministry. I had had a lot of damage done to me by people in the church as a pastor. And I was, not, I was not in the pulpit at the time. It's not your love of the people that will keep you in the ministry. I thought, wait a minute, that's, that's supposed to be what it's all about, it's love of the people. He said this, but your love of Jesus. If you have the love of Jesus in you, you'll do everything and you'll love people. That's the key. Is if, we, if we do what we're supposed to do, beloved, we will see things accomplished in our lives that we only maybe maybe only uh, dreamed about, but because of God in operation in us, uh, it's going to take us to new levels. Turn me to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, we're going to read, read at verse 1. I'm going to read out of the New Living, I mean the New King James on this one, but the rest of them. That was a question I have. you talked to Eric, Rob, about the program? No, you, you were supposed to call him. Anyway, that's all right. We'll go that later. Um, the, um, the rest of the quotes I'll have out of Scripture will be what? God moves when we pray. He actually passed earlier. Did he? Yeah. But they, she was trying to get a hold of all their family. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to miss him like I miss Joe, like I miss Pastor Callahan, like I miss Pastor Kim, like I miss anybody that leaves, you know, miss family. But you know what? He's not thinking about us right now. <laughs> He's not missing us. That's the cool part of heaven, isn't it? He's not missing us. He's not crying. He's not weeping. I know that the family will shed some tears, and that's natural. 
And that's important. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're rejoicing, but there will be times of, and that's, that's we just got to hold them. We got to keep holding the family up. Okay. I'm going to miss him. I hear his voice in my head. And, you know, when we, when we lose somebody, the, the memories we have, God gave us as tributes to them. And uh, I, can, I can hear my grandma's voice. And she, in March 20th, she'll be gone 50 years. Her favorite phrase when we play cards is, you dirty bird. I can hear her say that because she didn't like losing. I can hear my dad when I was a kid, I'd get in trouble or my brother would be getting in trouble. One of us, he'd go, watch it, just watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And it's just like, he was, you knew at that point, somewhere along the watching, you're getting slugged. Not slugged, but you're going to get, get whipped. Well, I'd rather than slugged. He was whipped. Yeah, he was horrible. I know Rob, one day when I'm no longer here, Rob will hear him his, my, my voice in his ears. The phrase, I, I need you to repeat it. Because I said so? That's exactly right. Because <laughs> it plays through his head right now and he blocks it, okay? I mean, I, 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 I can, I can, I can you, you hear those, the thing is the memories that we encapsulate in us when they're here, become memorials to them for us. And so um, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss everybody else that leaves, but we're going to see him shortly. I mean, it's drawing nigh, as the word would say. It's coming quickly. And uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna, let me read this verse, and I, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So, <clears throat> uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 1 says this, what then shall we say that Abraham, our father, was found according to the fle- uh, uh, found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Now we can boast about the things that we do, but they're not. If we're doing the kingdom stuff, it's not God's working through us. We can't boast. Has that done us? Abraham's faith, Abraham, everything that Abraham had that came out of it says. Says this in verse three. Says, "For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The belief in what God could do through Abraham and what his life was going to be out was accounted to God, not Abraham. Abraham realized it was not something he could do. I can't preach. I can't teach unless God or uh, orchestrates it. You know, I get in a morning. I get up on a Sunday morning. I've worked on a sermon all week and." I'll look at it again Saturday night. If I'm not complete, I'll finish it on Saturday night. But I get up on Sunday morning and go, I don't know. I just don't think I'm ready for this. I don't think I can do this. I'm not every Sunday morning, but some Sunday mornings. So I look at Debbie, I say, you're quick in today. She says, no, I'm not. Okay, well, I don't. don't, One thing you learn after 50 years, you don't argue with your wife because it doesn't get you anywhere. And he says, Abraham believed believed God, and it was accounted for him righteousness. Uh, Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. So he's saying this to let us know that our focus is not on the work, but on believing what God will do through us with what he's given us. Kenneth Higgins said this, that that I know not, I teach. No, I'm sorry. That, that that wouldn't work, would it? I don't have a lot of people to do that, but that's, I I misquoted this. Sorry, Brother Hagin. Anyway, it says, that that I know not, teach me. That should be our attitude. Teach me. And he goes on to say, that that I see not, show me. In other words, he was always open to instruction, just as Abraham was open to instruction. Kenneth Hagin, all his life, was open to instruction. That was a man of purpose, a man of a great understanding of the Word of God, but he was always open for someone to show him something new. That must be you and I. It must be our attitude towards learning. That's why we come to church. You know, last week, uh, Pastor Rob, uh, Pastor Rob, uh, Rob Holt uh, delivered, uh, delivered a good message. Some of it was just like facts. It's, you know, or, 
And facts change, as Debbie always says. Truth never changes, but facts change. Those, a lot of those facts that he gave us last week have changed already. They've, they've changed. But he got up here and taught what he knew and what he believed and, and, and delivered to us. Once we've learned, we're to teach. Teach all that we can teach, as much as we can teach. Well, teaching doesn't necessarily come from behind the pulpit or a lectern or a school. It comes in just teaching people out in the streets what you know about the kingdom of God. We as believers are responsible for that. But what is it that we're supposed to teach? Turn to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> it is also in the New King James Version. Romans 12, 1 through 8 says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as, living sac as a living sacrifice. Now stop and think about that a minute. That's giving it all, isn't it? That's giving everything you've got as a living sacrifice. In other words, I, can't, I don't do things today that I used to do 40 years ago. Not because God said, stop it. Some of you did say, he told me to quit smoking, he told me to do this, da, 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 da. But the thing is, is that I want to present to him a sacrifice of my life. Do I make that accomplishment every day? No, and neither do you. Neither did Pastor Callahan. Neither did Pastor Dave. We all make mistakes. There's always something that comes along. But that's our goal. That's our responsibility. That we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is our what? Reasonable service. That's not even asking everything of you, really, is it? When he says reasonable service, it's not your over-the-top all you can do service is your re it's, it's the bottom line that's where you start with your, your reasonable, reasonable service, service of being a living sacrifice that's the reasonable service i'm talking about and you go and do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by what the renewing of your mind we're transformed as we learn as we're taught we transform ourselves i can listen to i want to one of these days i do want to do a, a sermon just on our series or something on just songs we sing, we sing songs, songs every, every Sunday, Sunday, but do we really listen to what the words are saying? <clears throat> That's why I came back to that one today. We have every example they placed on that screen with, with words today out of that song. We have an operation in our church already. Do we believe it can continue? I believe people can still get it. We've lost Dave, Pastor Dave, the cancer, but I, I, I look at Rob Polk and knows that. Uh, Rob, too many Robs in this place. Rob Westbrook, and I know there's victory. I know that. I look at, I look, when Deb and I came back from God on the first time, we both sort of like, I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. I remember uh, Pastor Phil called me down the month after I got back. He's having a, a conference. You come? I said, no, I don't. And I really didn't feel like driving to Kentucky. He said, oh, man, I really wanted to hear. All he wanted to do was to present to the other pastors and the other people Something that God had done through me. And it's like, I still couldn't wrap my brain around it at that time. <clears throat> but I am more and more every day going to talk about it. <clears throat> I don't care if people understand it. It doesn't bother me anymore. You know, you tell a doctor you died and you were prayed back to life, they're going to look at you like, you need mental health. But that's what happened. That's what Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Jack was so excited he, 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 I don't know, he called Pastor Callahan back, and Pastor Callahan, Callahan called about the same time. And it's over here, it was Wednesday night, and Pastor Callahan's going to go to service. He said, I just raised Pastor Bob from the dead. I said, what did you tell him that for? Now he's going to put it online, and my, uh, 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 the kids will see it, and i got to call the kids and let them know before the world knows. The thing is, is that we have to be transformed by the renewing our mind. And what renews our minds is what we see prophecy at work, when we see healings, when we see all these things, that should be renewing our mind along with the teaching. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's will, perfect will for all of us is divine health. God's perfect will for all of us is to live a, hunt, a long life, Bob, 50 more years. That's God's perfect will for all of us. It doesn't always get accomplished. We've seen it recently, right? He goes on to say this in verse 3, says, For I say, though uh, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think uh, himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt a measure of faith to all of us. I, I let all of us on there. 
But he's given us all the measurement. We have what we need. To, we're equipped with what we need to move forward. We are equipped with what we need to do everything God asks us to do. You're standing in the grocery line. I've decided anymore. When I got, yeah, we saw it yesterday. Everywhere we went. It's, uh, we were, in, we were in Walmart. I'll just pick that's the last one. There was this family in front of us, and we pulled up, and this lady had a cart. I mean, it was almost overflowing with stuff. And I said, well, do you think this is out of 10, 10, 10 items, uh, Elaine? I said, well, then you can take care of 10, 10 items at a time and pay for it. You know? And so then a little girl comes up, and she's getting, I think it was a little girl, but she comes up and places these two candy bars on the, on the counter, one for her, one for her sister. I said, is that one mine? And, and, and so I so. I just joked a little bit with this little girl, and she's laughing, and mom's laughing. And we get out, and we're pulling away. They're just unloading into their car. And I, pull, I stopped, rolled down the window, and said, can I have my candy bar now? And she is like, I, I want to be, I want to spread my uh, humor throughout the world. <laughs> I, I, told, I told Kip today, he's got a sharp-looking shirt on, doesn't he? That flag, you know. I told him at the door, I walked in, I said, I like that shirt. Can I have it? I told him a little bit later, I said, don't forget to leave my shirt when you leave. You know, it's not like, he's looking at me like, like you should wear this thing, right? But uh, the, the thing is, is that God has dealt, given us all a, to, to do what we need to do. So we're out in the public and we see, and God says, speak to our heart. Say this to this person. Pray with this person. Well, then just do it. He's going to give you the words. He's not going to have anything held back. He's, going to give, he's giving you the measure of faith that gets you into the kingdom that's expanding as you grow it. As you grow it. For, verse 4 says this, For we have many members of one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body, and individually members one of another. Uh, um, and then uh, members of one another. Verse 6, having then gifts differing, differing according to the grace that is given us, let us use them. If prophecy, <clears throat> let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. You know, we're all supposed to be prophets. These gifts he's talking about, we all have them at operation at one time or another. When, when we speak up here, we speak directly to someone, that's prophecy. Now, Bob, back there, every once in a while, he'll come up with something that God's given him for somebody. He'll come up to Deb or me, and I, God's given me this, and I share that. He's very, he's prophetic, he's very diligent and respectful of, of the leadership of the church. I'm sure he does it in the home church, even, the, too, also. The thing is, is that all of us have that same ability. We speak prophetically a lot of times. You know, you speak prophetically to your children. You say, you're the dumbest, dumbest kid I've ever seen in my life. How, how stupid are you? That's prophetic words that they're hearing. Now, you, can, you, you, you may be mad at them, but you don't speak those words over them. And you know, most of us don't have kids that age. Well, grandkids. Why did you do that? That looks stupid. You know, i got to tell you, I lived a whole life, not because of my parents, but because of people that spoke in my life. I thought I was stupid. It took me until age 40 to go to college because I thought I was stupid. Someone spoke into my life prophetic words that moved me for a while. We've always told, I believe our kids, I think Rod can correct me if I'm wrong, we've always told you can do anything you want. You have the ability to do what you want to do. Now, I also tried speaking to Rob's life. I wanted him to be a lawyer. Actually, when he was a kid, I wanted him to be president of the United States when he was first born. That was, that was the invitation, we, the announcement we sent out. Maybe even president. I'm glad he's not president because we'd be in trouble. But the thing is, is that... <laughs> but those... But, <laughs> That's true. That's true. The thing is, is that, that we speak prophetically. When, you know, you speak to your spouse prophetically. You can say the wrong thing that will turn your spouse around and, and, and make a mess of the situation. So we guard our words. We're, the, we have life in our words, don't we? They create life. Go on and says this for ministry. Let us, use, uh, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who lends with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. You know, we have to realize that those gifts are in all of us at any given time. Matthew chapter 5. Now this is where I'm going to turn. He's going to throw it up there in the uh, New King James or whatever. And I'm going to read it out of the Passion because I really like the way the Passion said it. Uh, Matthew, chapter 5 of Matthew, verses 43 through 48, says this. Your ancestors have 
been taught, love your neighbors and hate the one, hate the one that hates you. Eye for an eye. People love that phrase. That's an Old Testament curse. Eye for an eye. He goes on to say, however, I say to you, love your enemy and bless those who curse you. God has taught me over the years so many times how to love those that have cursed me, have stolen from me, whatever. But I love them. The last guy that did it to us, I, we went, I feel where we were at yesterday. Oh, we went, we went, we went somewhere in East Prairie. I thought, what if he walked in? Every once in a while, think about it. Well, what I want to do, the first thing I want to say to him is, I, I love you for, for all the wrong you've done. I forgive you for the wrong you've done to me. And that's how I move forward. We can't live in unforgiveness, beloved. We have to live in love. He says, bless those. Love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Do something wonderful to, uh, for the one who hates you. You know what changes the atmospheres with friends or, or, or enemies even? People that don't like you. I can go back to grade school. I had a girlfriend, that, an ex-girlfriend that had a new boyfriend and she's sitting in class. You know how girls are. Trying to start trouble. So she said, my boyfriend beat you up. I said, I'm not afraid of your boyfriend. Now, deep down in, I'm not a, I don't like fighting. And deep down in, I probably was afraid. But I wasn't going to let her know just for the sake it was her. Thing is, is that I said, I'm not afraid of your boyfriend. So I get out after school and here's David Blumenschein waiting for me out on the playground. And, he's, and I walk up to him. I might as well walk up to him. I'm not going to run from him. He says, I hear you're not afraid of me. I said, I'm not afraid of you. Why would I need to be afraid of you? And the crowd started to gather. Because the word went out. word went out. They're going to be a fight tonight. Now, in my heart, we weren't fighting. <clears throat> I may have to take a punch, but we're not, I'm not fighting back. Okay? And I wore glasses all my life, so I was thinking, well, my glasses are going to get broken. My dad's going to beat me up also. You know? <laughs> the, th the thing is, is that, is that, is that I, I mean, I don't know how many pairs of glasses I broke right here. And I'd have to tape them. Okay, you're going to wear them taped. You broke them. You should have been more careful. And glasses were expensive. Okay, still. The thing is, is that I get out there. We start talking. The crowd's gathering around. They're expecting. And Dave and I start talking. We just start talking. We, as, and then as the crowd decided there's not going to be a fight, it started dispersing. Well, kids, other kids left. Dave and I walked home. We, we didn't know it. We only lived a block from each other. We became best friends for the next two years, so he moved out of the state. We were together all the time. He broke up with that girl also, so she lost him also. The thing is, 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 is that, is that we, we, you, know, you, you bless those who curse you. You do something wonderful for those who hate you. You respond to the very ones who persecute you by praying for them. That's the responsibility of a believer. I wasn't a believer back then, but God spoke to my heart how to not get into a fight. Because fighting was never my thing. My, my per perception of fighting was always this. <clears throat> in a fight, somebody always gets hurt. 50% chance I'm going to be the one who gets hurt. Okay? And, and I, 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 no, I fought a few times with my brother. Uh, that, that goes without saying. You're supposed to fight with your brother. You're supposed to fight with your siblings. I guess. That's what I thought anyway. Anyway, that's what he thought, maybe. The thing is, is that I didn't like fighting, and it was a matter of I'm going to do what I can, and as an unbeliever state, to do what was right. Drop one down, and I'm not going to read all the way through um, 45 through 46, but drop down to verse 47. It says, how are you different from, any, how are you any different from, from others if you limit your kindness only to your friends and don't even, and don't even the ungodly, the godly do that? In other words, we're no different. So all we're looking at as our friends and doing good to them, the ungodly do that. People that don't know Jesus do that. People that hate everybody in the world have friends that they do that for. But they don't do it for everybody. Our responsibility, beloved, is to spread the love of God wherever we go. To share. That's the essence of that, that section there, is to love those that are unlovable. To put ourselves in a position where God says, I've gifted you with my love. Jesus says, I've gifted you with my peace. There's no reason you have to be stressed. There's no reason you have to be depressed. You know, I have to say, and I, and I, I look, again, I, I believe this, I may be wrong, Rob Westbrook can correct me if I'm wrong. A piece of God fell over him at that point and, and, uh, of that initial reaction. He allowed the peace of God to enter into him and it never has lifted. 
You don't see that. When that happened with me in Ghana, I wanted the peace of God. That's my mantra now. Jesus said, I'm going to give you peace. Not as the world gives you. I'm going to give you my peace. What's his peace? It's over everything. Nothing can, I don't get stressed anymore. I don't want to argue anymore. I don't fight anymore. Debbie's so thankful for all that. You know, the thing is, is that I don't want to be anywhere but in an attitude of peace. And that's Rob Westbrook. You watch him walk in. He's quiet. He's peaceful. And it spread like wildfire if you get a hold of it. It'll catch all of us on fire for the peace of God. Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. Now, if I'm wrong, Rob, you can correct me. But I believe that peace entered on you, and it's never lifted. And it's, and it's the reason why he's walking in health today. Um, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. Again, out of the uh, met, uh, Passion Translation. Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another. And never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. What's that mean? Be who God made you to be. Now, when you first start doing this, like people say, I want to walk by faith. Well, that's lying. I used to tell them, just fake it. Fake it till you make it. Walk in faith. You start walking in faith. You know you think I'm lying? Walk in faith and see what God does for you. Faking it's not what I'm after. But one thing is, is if you walk in the... In the, in the message that the Lord has given us to walk by faith. Have the faith. Jesus said to the disciples, have the faith of God. Have God's kind of faith. God's faith is unlimited. It's just out there. Think about what he's done in your life. Think about where you came from for a moment. Just think about where you came from for a moment. Past week or so, I've been listening to just listening to old Christian music that I used to listen to when I first got saved. And it's bringing back memories. I can't wait till the 24th to go see that movie. I'll go see it three or four times. I'm going to make Pastor Jim go with us the first time, and then I'll go see it because I know it's going to... Re- it, it's the beginning of the wave. The Chosen is the beginning of the wave. Do you know that the guy that wrote Chosen is the son of the guy, the guy that left, wrote Left Behind? It's the beginning of the wave. <clears throat> And then you, you just, you have to see it. As believers, we should see it coming. We, we do see it coming out on the news every night, right? He says, he goes on to say in that, verse 9 says, let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another and to never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Hate the evil, but not the person. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. Jesus didn't, uh, uh, hate Zacchaeus. He didn't hate Matthew, even though in the chosen shows that Peter sure did in the beginning. Jesus loved him. And what happened when he loved them? It changed them, right? He goes on to say, be devoted, tenderly, and loving to your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor for one another. If I'm not really a hugger, and I'm very careful hugging women. So usually if I hug you as your woman, I try to do like now Every once in a while you get smacked, and they hug in the front. <laughs> Gail Westbrook is a hugger. Huh? And she doesn't do side hugs. So the first time I met Gail, I'm getting... Whoa, this is a little too... And, I, and I, I would always try to hug her from the side. And she'd go, why do you do that? That's who I am. Hey, Gail, respect this one time. No. 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 Not at all. The thing is, is that she's a hugger. So you know she's a hugger? Hug her first. Top her off. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Man, that's not the right way to say that. I want to cut that phrase out. <laughs> Thank God for Ashley, right? The thing, the thing is, is that outdo, be competitive with the love of God. Be com- com- <laughs> I don't want to go up there. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, 
well, to be honest with you, I've just sort of, I've, I've just, I've just, I've given in. Why fight the battle, right? I told you I'm not a fighter, just give in, right? The thing is, the people, the love of God should be so overwhelming in all of us that when we see one another, we, it's, it's, we come from a competitive family, and, and my kids come from a competitive family because of Debbie. And, but and we always try to outdo each other. We always, we always have, and it's, it's good. It's, it's driven uh, uh, my daughter to become a doctor because she wants to do. She's the girl. She's center in the middle, always surrounded by boys, and she's just trying to out, out excel the boys. Now, Rob should have had his Ph.D. 20 years ago. I won't cover that. I won't go into that. He chose to wander in the wilderness and do all that kind of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> the, the thing, do what? I'm closer than you are. I have a doctorate. Let's put it like that. Uh, how do we come back on me? I have, Gail, I have the platform. You started it. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord Keeping your passion towards him boiling hot, radiate this, verse 11, radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with the excitement he had that you have to serve him. And that's, that's what we teach. Why do we teach? Why, do we te Why is it we come here to learn from one another? Scripture stresses that our gifts are given to us to benefit others. That's the reason why preachers preach. The giftedness that's in them is meant to be shared. Uh, those that pray, the giftedness in them is meant to be shared. Teach others how to pray. We have intercessory prayer every Sunday morning. What time do you meet at again? Uh, 9.15 9 to 9.45, right? Something like that, 9.30? That's 15 minutes today. Right back in the nursery. And they're praying for the church. They're praying for the service. They're praying for all of us. Come be a part of that. We have Thursday night mountain movies. So why do we call it mountain movie? Because if you get into the Word of God, it's going to move the mountains in your life. We're, we're, we have a, a good group. I'd love to have everybody there. It's the, the purpose of this is that all of us learn from one another. It's a one-hour gig, you know, in and out, you're quick. It's, it's fine. You know, First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 through 11 says, Every believer has received grace gifts to use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many-colored tapestry of God's grace. Verse 11, for example, if you have a speaking gift, speak as though God is speaking his words through you. I actually will add to that. We all have the speaking gift to speak God's words that we have here to others. If you have the gift of serving, do it with passion. Do it passionately with the strength of God that gives you so that in everything God alone be glorified through Jesus Christ. For him to belong the... For him to belong the power and glory forever throughout all the ages. Amen. When we serve, we're all called to be servants. That's the title that we all enter heaven with. Welcome home, thou good and faithful servant. It's not going to be Pastor Bob. It's going to be Servant Bob. It's not going to be Pastor Dennis. It's going to be Servant. It's not going to be, uh, going to be uh, Pastor Gary. It's, 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 it's Servant. We all, we're all in God's eyes equal in terms. We're all equal. All of our gifts, there's none greater than the other. Really, technically. Now, there's a five-fold ministry that we're responsible for teaching and doing the preaching and all that stuff, but all of us have the same thing. You should be preaching and teaching wherever you go. You should be evangelizing wherever you go. You should be a missionary wherever you go. It's, it's all of us doing the same work with the same giftedness. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 through 8 says this. <clears throat> In the human body, there are many parts and organs, each with a unique function. And so it is in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we have been mingled into the body of Christ. This means that we are vitally joined one to another with each contributing to others. We come to church, real church. There's a passage in 1 Corinthians, I think it's First or 2 Corinthians, where Paul teaches that real church is when we all come in and share our giftedness with one another. And that's me paraphrasing what he said. But you know, there was a service while, well, it's been a while back, I wasn't here I think Debbie was leading it, if I remember correctly. And the, the, the Holy Spirit just moved up on the people. It's sort of like we did today. This is, this is something that we all contribute in, you know. And I know it takes a lot of you just to come up in the front, just to hold hands, takes you out of your comfort zone. 
But beloved, we should have a comfort zone other than the whole body ministering together when we're together. That should be our comfort zone. If you're going to make a mistake exercising your gift, there's no better place to make it than in the body of Christ on Sunday or Thursday or anytime we're gathering because we all love everybody. And it's, it's like so many people are afraid of doing something and making a mistake in doing it. Don't. God's going to give you every part of that gift that you need that's in you. He's going to just pull it out. God, God, verse, verse 6, six says, says, God's, God's uh, marvelous, marvelous grace imparts to, to each one of us varying gifts and ministries that are uniquely ours. Your, your gift. gift. It, it may be, be preaching, preaching, but your, your preaching gift is different than mine. And obviously, obviously, you see, see that, that every time, time we get somebody, somebody in here preaching. preaching. They're, They're all different. different. Pastor Jack, Pastor Jim, Pastor Sherry, Sherry all of us who are we're we're all pastors, pastors but our, our ministry as pastors is all different. different. Part of my pastoral ministry is counseling. counseling. And I'm, I'm good, good at it because, because God, God made, made me good at it. Not because, because something Bob Martin did. did. I'm, I'm putting, I have, I have to write an article for the ministry every month. And this, this, this last, last month was, was like a two-month-long two article. article. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Jim says, well, call me back when I get done reading it in September. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about my articles. articles. I'm not afraid how many have done already, but I've decided to take those, and I'm going to start, start putting this together right away. <clears throat> but it's going to be, I the name, the title of my council is I Council, You Council. We all council. And so, and so I'm, 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 I'm putting put it together as a book, I Counsel, You Counsel, Essays of the Pastor Council, Pastoral Council, Pastoral Council. And I'm going to put it together, together because I want it out there. I want people, people to, I want everybody to And by the way, is this February? So you have March, March, May, June, July, August. August 31st. Here's what I want from every one of you. Is an essay. Hank says, I'm not coming back. Hank says, I know a date I'm not going to be at church. It's in August. Here's why. Here's why. I'm not an essay. Please hear an essay. And I'll, and Hank, I'll help you write it. Okay, in your case. Dustin, I'll write it for you. No, I'm going write it. No. Why? Because every one of us have a, first off, every one of us have a book in us. The book that's in you is vital to somebody else. If, if, Vince told, if, if Rob, Rob or Vince told, told their stories, stories of their wandering years, years it's going to awaken in others, and to, to the conclusion where they're at right now, it's, it's going to awaken in others. If they did it, I can do it. I, I want to put, put a book, book together from this church that we can present to the world of the change that God's made in your life. Think, think about, about when, when, I know Rob Westbrook cannot wait to write this. Think about when he writes the testimony of what God's done in his life the past five years. Think about this. People are going to read that and go, what? I don't have to succumb to that. I can't have victory over that. And it's going to change people's lives. When I write my testimony of what God did in my life in Ghana and after, beloved, it's going to change people's lives. But we all have. You don't have to have a major... Uh, ministry, ministry of being a prodigal. prodigal. You don't have to have a major uh, life of having had a major change in life physically. physically. Every one of us has. If Dina writes the story about how she started her bakery and how God spoke to her to do that and where she's at today, it'll challenge people to, 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 to step out into their giftedness. You know, so we're, we're, going, to, we're going to put a book together through the, by the end of the year. That's why I'm giving all the stories for That's a long time, Hank, to write a paragraph. I'm not, I'm not looking for you to write a book. I'm, I'm looking for you to look, look into your spirit, spirit into your soul, into your life, and say, you know what? I have a story to tell. Once, Once you put it on paper, it's easier to tell out there. there. It's, it's easier, easier because right, right, when you write it, it's like I tell people in the journal. journal. When you journal, it's writing it down, it's easier to get rid of those thoughts and move forward. Because, you know, somebody comes along and says, my dad, I actually have a client, I said, my dad, Great. Now, this, now, this person, person has a, a grown adult now, with children of his own. But, but he, he remembers, remembers back to a time in his childhood. I said, journal it. I said, write him a letter. Write him his dad's death. I said, write your dad a letter about what he did and forgive him. Say, I forgive you of this. 
I forgive, I forgive you, you what you, you did in my life. life. Steal it up. And, and if he's, he's got, got any, he doesn't, he doesn't know where his dad's buried. He's buried, he's buried somewhere out of state. state. I said, so we're going to take it, seal it up, and burn it. And, and when you burn it, as the ashes, ashes fall to the ground, as the ashes, ashes the thing curls up, you walk away in forgiveness. And you're healed of that area. If you choose to walk away from it. That's the part of it. You've got to choose to walk in it. So there's things in all of our lives that we can write a story about. And some, and some of us are there 90 days, days that's, that's a long story. story. But the, the thing, thing is, is, is that, beloved, it will change people's lives. If you, you testify what God took you from to where you're at today, it will change people's lives. I'm, I'm not, not saying that's who you are. You're not that person anymore. anymore. But, but somebody, somebody else is that person. person. So, so we're going to put a book together. together. Last, last thing here. Last thing. Last thing I want to share is who do we teach? You and I are called to teach. I don't care what you do, you're called to teach. Gail teaches every Monday through Friday at base. I've been there and how those kids are. She teaches them discipline. She teaches them the word. She teaches them to have fun. But she's teaching. Uh, we're to teach one another. You and I are to teach one another. That's what the quickening is about. That's what monthly service is about. That's what the men's and women's uh, prayer breakfasts are about, is to teach one another what we learn. And that's the reason why we teach in, in such a way, way that we all get to respond. We all get to have a little conversation. In it. But our main calling is to teach the world. To teach them there's a better way, as Rob put it. I love that phrase. To teach them that there's a better way of what they're doing and where they're living at. Um, we're to teach them good tidings of great joy. What's joy? What do they call that when you take the first letter? And what's it called, Rob? Take the This acronym says this. J is Jesus. We teach them Jesus. Um, o is others, and Y is you. You teach yourself, you learn, you stay diligent to learning about what God's called you to do and be. Now, I've got a lot more into that comment, but I'm just going to go to the conclusion because oh, we've, had, we've had a long service and I want to keep going. It's super, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, clocks are set for it. I understand that. But you do notice that the Bears and the Colts are not playing. <laughs> or Dallas. And Dallas. Let's just show Dallas. And, just show right on. and so I'll tell you what I'm rooting for. Kansas City Chiefs. I like Mahomes. Anyway, that's not concluded. The conclusion is this. We're, as Rob said a few weeks back, we're at war. And what he said something a couple weeks ago was that really caught my ear. I, and and, and, and it was, I'm sure it was hard for him to say. He doesn't believe his kids will see adulthood on earth. I remember raising kids. What are they going to be like when they're adults? <clears throat> what are they going to look like when they're adults? And then, once I get pressed into that, what are my grandkids going to be like? You know, things like that. So it's like, last week then, Rob Polk gave us a list of issues that we need to be aware of. Not fear, not being afraid of what's going on, but gave us a list of issues that, that, that's a good idea for us to hear about. I don't, ha I, I don't have the school we have for me. I have enough schooling to choke a mule. And, um, but it's not about me. It's not, but I'm responsible to teach. That's my main responsibility is to present opportunities for everybody to learn. I tell the other pastors at the watershed we meet every week or every month. And um, I've had Pastor Mike, uh, Pastor, yeah, Pastor Mike teach in the school this last year. And I told him, I said, and now the, the, the other pastor get a hold of the school, they get an idea, and this is something good. Because they want their people learning. They want they, their people getting stronger too. My responsibility is to teach the school is designed to quicken your giftedness. That's what it's designed for. The school is not about getting a certificate like we gave today, although when it's all said and done, we will give certificates out. Not necessarily. We did it for that class because that was a different class. It's about you growing your gift that God's placed in you in your physical body since your physical birth. God placed it in you. It's you getting a hold of it. It's you running with it. It's you giving everything you've got to excel in it. For you growing it. All those things. It's your spirit. You know, our body, we, since we've been born, we feed ourselves, right? Just look at me. You know I've fed myself over the years. When I met Debbie before we married, I was thin. 120 pounds. I don't weigh 120. Well, I do now. I'm a little bit more than 120 pounds. Just a little bit. I weighed myself this morning, so I'm not going to tell you how much it is because it's horrible. 
We feed ourselves every day, right? Sometimes three. Hank says he only eats one meal a day, but the one meal is like a banquet meal. It's all, you, you actually have to have two tables to sit with him at lunch or, I saw him one time at Steak and Shake. What was that burger they had? He ordered a seven by seven and two hot dogs and french fries. And a Diet Coke. Uh, hey, look. We feed ourselves every day because our body needs it. Am I correct? Our body needs it. It doesn't matter what kind of diet you're on. You're, 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 uh, Dina? Before you fall asleep. Did you know that, what's the name of the company again? Makes it canned icings. It's Betty Crocker. Uh, okay, well, here's the deal. They have a keto one. No sugar. <laughs> anyway. We feed our bodies. Why? Because we need it. You know that our spirit man needs to be strengthened? We need to feed our spirit man. That's why we have church. That's why we have fellowship groups. That's why we have the, the school. It's to feed our spirit man because our spirit. And you never really top out. I said I've got all kinds of, I, I, I love teaching. I love being in the classes. Why? Because I'm learning. I want to learn. I want to be a part of that. I passed a gym today. We definitely drove three straighters to the gym right down where it used to be a root beer stand there. Um, and it's like, they have a gym there. And I just caught it in my corner of my eye. All the cars are in that parking lot. And that's the only thing that's open right down there. I thought to myself, they're down there working on their bodies. They're down there, you know, doing what they need to do to get themselves, to keep themselves fit, all that kind of stuff. But there's, there was more cars in that parking lot of that gym lot today than there are in some churches today. Because the body of Christ that is out there, if they're taking advantage of the internet and they're not getting the, uh, the rest of where Jesus, or where Paul wrote, I think it was, for Satan out selling yourselves together. I understand people have to go out for illness. I understand people are out of town. Welcome back, Floridians, to our church. <laughs> it, 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 and it's, it's like, but our responsibility first is, is to fellowship one with another, to get stronger one with another. How can we change the world if we don't pursue understanding and growing our giftedness? Now, this whole message was geared till tomorrow night. I'd love to see everybody in that class the next four or five weeks. Pastor Vicki and I are alternating teaching in it, and it's all about you getting an understanding of your giftedness. And I, I and Dean and Dan, I know you went through classic stuff, you know, and, and you go back through things. Why? What? In the army, they do everything in repetition. Why? Basketball players do everything in rest. The coach teaches them everything in repetition. Why? Because they get more skilled at it. They get more understanding of it. Um, we went to, Zach had a tournament yesterday, so we played three games, and, and Debbie hates sitting right where we sit because she hears him. Everybody hears him. He's a loud guy in there. But the thing is, is like, he calls them mental midgets. He calls them, you guys, you'd be, you know, he's, and, he, and he really, but he's trying to raise up out of them in a roundabout way, I guess, their giftedness because they're good basketball players. It's a good team. But when they're not excelling at the level they could be, he challenges that. And he teaches it in, in, in practice every night. And so, beloved, that's what, that's what the school's about. That's what the church is about. For us to grow in what we may already know about ourselves and about the kingdom. But when we don't attend, it doesn't hurt anybody but us. So I'm challenging you know, those that haven't signed up. I'd love to have you there. You're going to like it. Hank, it's going to be good. There's no test. There's no paper. You're just going to learn about yourself. It's going to help us, as a body, become better at what we should be doing. Amen? I love you guys. It's been a good morning this morning for all of us. Keep uh, the Gibbs family in, in your prayers this week. Uh, and uh, I know that God's, God, God's got a victory in all that. Amen?